So, long story short, I've been wanting to do a YouTube channel for ages, but I've gotten so caught up in what should it be about, what should I do, what should the first video be, that I've finally just broken down and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do something really, really simple and something that I can just talk a whole lot about that I'm really passionate about, and that thing is my MCR collection. Um, MCR has been a big part of my life less or so now than it used to be but a big part of my life for quite a long time now at least 15 or so years i started listening to mcr in about 2007 when they were like at their peak peak like black parade had just come out everyone was obsessed i didn't hear them on the radio until actually maybe two or so years ago but they were everywhere everyone knew who, knew who they were and i was also part of that target audience that they were like that the label was making music for. Um, and, um, well, it's a long story, but I love MCR and I'm gonna go, and I'm going to show you my collection today. This boy. So, uh, anyone who's really into MCR or is specifically familiar with MCR's, like, vinyl releases, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you had a little uh, because I realize that even possessing this is a whole lot more of a deal than it probably used to be. How did I come into possession of this? I bought it on Amazon in like 2012 for $20. This record was almost impossible to come by in the wild. I've certainly never seen it even in a record store. And on eBay, they go for upwards of hundreds of dollars. Um, I can give you a quick look right now. It is my favorite. It's like a common favorite, I think, for a lot of MCR fans. Beautiful copies of the handwritten lyric sheets. Lyrics produced again on the back. I used to listen to this a lot, so I'm actually... Um, I'm still very precious with it, but I was very precious when I got it in the first place. Yeah, it draws out revenge, just like that. The design of all of these is incredible. Imperfection right there. I just used to listen to this all the time. Over and over again. Uh, and I didn't realize, um, what a leap of luck that that would be. Did they show you the stencil? Yep. Stencil. That's always going to stay in here too. So this was my first and only MCR record for years. I didn't purchase my others for a couple of years. Trying to like decide which one to like even show next. I can't even remember honestly which one even got next. I guess I'll just show them chronologically like in how they re were released. I love picture discs very, very much. This is a great example of a picture disc. And even though this is not the first copy of Black Parade that I've owned, it's um, certainly probably my favorite, even if it's not that valuable. I've kept the, um, the listing stickers on top of it. It's in this pretty, protective sleeve and I just love the guys on the back. They look fantastic and it brings back all the memories. I actually don't play this one that often even though this is probably a safer one to play. This is an original copy of the Black Parade from 2007. It is still in the original plastic and it's one of craziest things I probably own. It's kind of a miracle that I came to buy it, you know, because it was actually just on eBay, as things tend to be, and I was a college student. I was working a lot. I was lucky. I had the extra money, and I knew if I didn't buy it and spend the crazy money on it, then I would never see it again. I'm not sure if I would ever actually part with this, like, it feels like an heirloom at, or something at this point or something that I need to cherish and protect. But honestly, I don't know, if an emergency came, this would probably be one of the first things I would part with because I know its value. But the best part of it is the sticker right on top. 
December 2007 for $19.95. I mean, damn. I have the giant ass trifold, like, three record, 10 year anniversary edition of the Black Parade slash Living with Ghosts that I've never opened and it's just stayed in the plastic. I bought it at a Barnes & Noble. I've never opened it up, so I can't really tell you what it looks like on the inside, but it's very sleek. Um, the designs of all of these are fantastic. They're great to look at, and um, they stay in my fancy box because even holding them feels a little bit weird. Maybe that's never stop you. I actually haven't listened to all of this either. Again, I'm just kind of a poser completist, but this really kind of is like a... I don't know, it's the greatest hits album. It's gonna crown everything else. It's gonna cover all the basics. The design, I'm gonna keep going on about the design. The design is fantastic. Look at this shit. You know how many, like, how much brain power they probably went into just designing this thing? It's a beautiful trifold. Look at this cover. I'm gonna open up this sucker right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's got their, like, all the members, even the shitty ones get their own coffin there, right? And the dates with which they work with the bands. And thank you for the venom, thank you for everything, yeah, 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 rock and roll. All the listings on the back. And not only that, but because I'm fancy and extra, I have to get the pretty release, which includes it being like the super pinky swirly release that I probably paid too much money for. Huzzah. This, guys, is the most money I have ever spent on a single record. This sucker is an original print of the Bring Me Your Bullets and I'll Bring You Your Love. It's, that's probably incorrect how I said it, but the Bullets record for My Chemical Romance. It is like in very good plus condition. It was just a lucky eBay find. I spent way too much money than I had at the time because I just had a heart attack and had to have it. It's still in the plastic. You can see the shimmer shimmer there. Um because I bought this before all those reprints came out. I would also like a pink reprint, but that's just a purchase for another, an impulsive purchase for another day. Gas price is too high right now. Okay, come on. These original ones also have pretty colors. In all honesty, if I could choose between all of them, I would have gotten a solid orange, which I don't think I've ever seen for sale. I've only heard about or read about somewhere, but this one, is I like to call it silver even though if you know anyone with eyes can say that it's clear it, it's clear it is clearly clear uh, I actually used to listen to this one a lot for I figured I shouldn't I mean I'm still precious with it honestly but of them all this is the one that I would listen to quite regularly because I spent so much money on it on to the merchandise I don't have a Black Parade hoodie. I think that's the most iconic, like, middle school hoodie, like, 2007, 2008, like, kind of wannabe emo kid, which was me, hoodie to have was, like, the, the Black Parade one with, like, the stivets going across and the, it, it looked like the Black Parade uniform. I don't have that one. I've never come across that one. Every time I do on eBay, it's just way too damn expensive. But with this one, I did get lucky. Very, very pretty. No zipper, just like a plain kind of um, hoodie, like kangaroo pouch in the front. Just like the band font on the front. Put the suck around, and that's where the beauty is. Um, I got really lucky with this again. Um, I was living in the UK at the time when I found this. It is vintage. It is original. I have never seen another like it. If someone wants to comment and tell me that it's a fake or a ripoff, then that's fine. I still know that it's old and it's still awesome and I've never seen another one like it. And it's really cool to wear this and get compliments like every time I wear it. Like, it's probably the crown in my hoodie collection. You guys ever seen one of these? Long story short, I think this is probably the m most coveted of the MCR shirts. It is the James Dean, like Phantoms Forever, right there at the bottom, MCRT. Look at that tag, faded jerseys tag, 
this is the real deal. It's slightly imperfect. I think there's like a moth hole at the bottom of it. And I found it by how eBay. There's a thing here. Ding, ding, ding. I think I paid somewhere around $40 for it. This was a little bit kind of before the MCR resurgence. Um, this was before they announced that they were getting back together, like all that. I think this was like maybe two, three years ago and I just got lucky. I keep it in the, like the super precious like plastic storage bag just cause I don't want it to get like eaten up at all. Sometimes I'll bust it out for some special occasions and it's actually a great conversation piece because people will come up to me and like, where did you get that? Oh my God, I've never seen that design before. And it's really cool to wear out and about. Yeah. I have also had people like, I think I posted about this once before, like back in my Tumblr years, and I had not, not one, but several people message me about like, are you willing to part with that? I'll give you some money for that. To which I, you know, politely declined, but I was also, uh, I've always been really surprised at that as well. I don't know, maybe if my mother needed a kidney, I would part with this. At one point I had quite a largest collection of MCR shirts, but not now. Now I only have two. The one that I just showed you, the James Dean, and also this one. It's just the original like plain logo tee. This was the one that I used to wear around the middle school a lot. I would wear it almost religiously. Like every Friday I would wear this to school and all my friends would all get together and we would all wear our MCR march to school because that's middle school. I love it because it reminds me of those times and it's the one that I had when I was a kid and so it's this one and the James Dean that I kept. I had others over time like there's like a Jack the Ripper design or something. Not Jack the Ripper. What is it called? The Sleepy Hollow one. There's like a Sleepy Hollow design that I got rid of like maybe two years ago on eBay when I was just needing the cash. Um, I also at one point had like, there's a design, like a Black Parade design when it's like they're like on a roller coaster and it was like I survived the, the Black Parade or something like that. It was an original print and I'm kind of sorry that I got rid of it, but I gave it to an ex of mine. I mean, the list goes on and on, honestly. You don't need me to tell you about it. Did I mention that they have singles? So, um, these tiny singles are really precious and so cute and aesthetically pleasing and they are picture discs, so I had to have them. I do not have all of them. They're just harder to come by, especially, I think they were predominantly released in the UK. So if you want them, you can find them on eBay, but have to spend like a lot of money, not just on them, but getting them shipped to you. And because I lived in the UK for a little while, I just got them all while I was over there. Long story short. This is the one for the I Don't Love You and Cancer live single. Very pretty. It's like stills from the I Don't Love You video. Um, I'll probably, uh, I almost never play these, but I'll probably end up uh, framing them at some point. The Ghost of You and Helena Live. Short and sweet. These, oh God, I suppose I can just go ahead and show you these. Just the one thing. I can't even remember how I came across this. Um, this is like that single that Frank Iero uh, wrote. Like it's the, the it's like a, the cover single. Like he did Be My Baby and Walk the Line. Um, and it's called For Jemaya, for his wife. I love this guy so much, but between you and me, this is one of the worst things I've ever heard. I just kind of hang on to it because, um, because I like and respect him and also a little bit of investment in a shitty way. If I needed fast cash, I would probably sell this. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're aware of like all, like that abandoned record or something that MCR had either, I can't remember if it was like before Danger Days or after Danger Days where they ended up like abandoning the project. I'm gonna fix that. They ended up abandoning the project, I think because of all the bullshit they were going through with their drummer. Like they had a drummer that was like tried stealing from them or something like that. And then there were other conflicts within the band and they abandoned the project and then um, ended up releasing the what is it even called? Like, this is how much I don't actually know about. It's like the uh, the weapons. I just call them the, the weapons. They're not even quite singles, EPs, mini discs, whatever the hell they are. They released that entire uh, record through these individual little collectible discs. I don't have any of those. Honestly, um, if I'm unfamiliar with the music, I'm really not quite into it. I just kind of like 
the stuff that I already know that I enjoy. You know, Danger Days perhaps being an exception. I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there with much more extensive collections than I do, but I wanted to continue and just kind of drop that out there before um, I continued with my mini discs. This is the I'm Not Okay. What is it even called? It's a single. It's a single. It's a tiny red single. Um, do I remember how much I paid for it? No, I don't. I just know it's worth a lot more now. There's this baby. Yes, I have this baby. I have the thank you for the venom. The thank you for the venom. Wow. This one is probably my favorite, actually. And in my entire MCR collection, this is my favorite. Um, because it's the prettiest. Also, it has the Jack the Ripper live version on it, which you can like listen to it on YouTube or whatever, but I am unsure if it was ever released other than maybe... No, wasn't it on the l murder scene CD? Am I thinking that correctly? Whatever. And then last but not least, the um, Head First for Halos single release. Look at that early artwork. Look at how cute that is. It's very Y2K emo, honestly. I have only, there's a sister to this single as well and I've only ever seen it once on eBay. I let it get away from me because I just didn't have the money at the time. Um, I will probably end up posting like a picture of it there because I just can't remember what it's called. But I mean, my I'll always be on the lookout for it, but I mean, good luck to all of us these days. $100 for it, probably maybe two-ish, three-ish, God, it might even be more than that now, was already a lot, but by today's standards, so much more of a deal. And in all honesty, I'm not sure if I'll ever get my hands on it for less than what I can really afford. Danger Days. Danger Days is not my favorite. It's got some bangers on here, but honestly, I just kind of got this one because I'm a bit of a completist um, as far as their music goes. Even if they did come out with another album, which they may or may not, I'm kind of indifferent to it. This kind of came into my life a little bit late, I stopped listening to MCR for a couple of years and then got back into them and I was like, hmm, I should get back all that back into it again. Even though Danger Days is not my favorite, some of the concepts in here are really fun. There are some banging songs on here. And this album, particularly this release of this vinyl, is really pretty. It's like the purple, violet. I don't play it that often. Let me see. You can probably see it from here a little bit. Yeah, just look at those colors. Bam. I paid way too much money for this. I think I was turning like 22, something like that, like my 22nd birthday. And I um, wasn't having the best birthday, so I break down and bought way too much money for something that I really shouldn't have. And that was this. Ladies and gentlemen, the Black Parade is dead. This came out uh maybe two-ish years ago for record store day still got the little label down there i keep it in the plastic because i'm boring and because it's just way too pretty but um this is one of my favorite live performances i try to watch it always around halloween because it fits and i'm usually really emotional on halloween anyway so i can just cry waterworks and spend a lot of time with myself um, surprisingly enough of all the great records i have this one is probably one of my favorite of my mcr collection and it's worth investing in the uh, CD-DVD combo is just as amazing, probably a little easier to just have this laying around your house like I do. Um, it's also a full on YouTube, but also if you're watching this, I'm sure you're aware of that already. It feels like almost everyone has one of these. I think I was in college when the reprints, like with like the blood spatter, which is this one came out, which was like five-ish, six -ish years ago. And I knew I had to have one, knew I just had to have one. Originally at Hot Topic, I'm looking at the sticker right now, it was $24.50. I know I certainly paid at least double for these on eBay, which may or may not have been a really stupid thing to do. But I invested in them and now I have them forever. But I would say that out of all of the reprints, I think this is the prettiest. I don't have all of the reprints. I think I have just two of them. And now they're too expensive for 
really me to even buy. Like I kind of stopped buying MCR stuff quite a while ago, but it is so, so pretty. This is probably the prettiest one. Like I said a couple years ago, was it five, six years ago? I should clarify, but I really don't care enough. Like they did a whole like re-release of uh, the MCR records. I don't think they did, ever did like a reprint of Danger Days, but I know they for sure did those reprints of Revenge. They did like a, like a completely red, right? Cause I know the original, the one that I showed you is like, red but I think they did like a solid red for Hot Topic and also the splatter which I also showed you. They also did Bone which this is the Bone one. It's the prettiest one honestly and then uh, for Black Parade and then they also did didn't they do like a misty smoky one or something like that or gray and it was super magical like it wasn't just that it was like a smoky gray but like they etched into the record like the scenery so like all of this was etched into the record you can see it like it was beautiful but i didn't buy it at the time and i certainly can't buy it now because those numbers have just shot up anyhow i love this one it's the bone one it's like black and milky with like spots in it it's a lot prettier than how I just described it. I would get it out for you, honestly, but I have trouble with getting the record in and out here, which is why the sleeve is kind of sticking out a little bit. So um, you're just gonna have to use your imagination or look it up online. So that's gonna be it for the first video. I think I'll probably end up doing a part two as well that won't be so extensive. Like I don't have any more vinyl, but I got like some CDs and some artwork and whatever i got i got a little bit more to show you thank you anyway for uh tuning in and watching my video i know it's a little bit bumpy i've never edited anything in my life so i'll try my best and that's it i am nothing else thank you Bye.